Uh, so again, the subject of my talk today is uh, uh, phenotype of uh, uh, phenotype and functions of ribotype specific uh, T17 cells targeting uh, P acnes. Uh, so, uh, uh, so um, we all know that you know acne vulgaris. This is a disease of the uh, of the pilosebaceous unit, and uh, you know it's like uh, preaching to the choir here. Uh, but you know that different factors are involved in its uh, pathogenesis. But uh, today I'm mainly going to focus on the uh, inflam inflammatory component here that's driven by the bacteria itself. Uh, so uh, both the uh, innate and adaptive components of the immune system are involved. Uh, we know that uh, piacne is mainly recognized by toll-like receptor 2, and it also activates uh, the inflammasome complex, leading to the production of uh, pro-inflammatory cytokines such as IL-1, uh, IL-8, and IL-12. And uh, teach one cells, uh, Actually, Paul is over here. Paul is the one who discovered the role of uh, uh, TH1 cells. And uh, he showed that uh, TH1 cells are recruited to the sites of early inflamed acne lesions. And today, I'm mainly, at uh, the subject of my talk, I'm mainly going to show you the role of TH17 cells in, in this disease. Uh, so TH17 cells, these are subsets of uh, CD4 uh, T cells. And we know that uh, uh, in the periphery, uh, naive uh, uh, T cells interact uh, with a APCs, antigen-presenting cells, and then uh, they differentiate uh, into different subsets of uh, T cells under, this, under the uh, instructions of uh, uh, specific cytokines. Uh, so TH1, uh, TH17 cells are mainly involved in uh, uh, they provide immunity to extracellular bacteria, uh, also provide immunity to fungal infections. They're also potent inducers of uh, tissue inflammation. Uh, so, um, oh, sorry. Uh, so the functional, uh, uh, so the functional uh, um, effector molecules uh, that are produced by these cells uh, uh, include IL-21, IL-22, IL-17, RCCL-20, and IL-26. Uh, TH17 cells mainly express the transcription of factor retinoic of an uh, receptor C, and. Uh, uh, IL-17, uh, uh, the signature cytokine produced by these cells act on both uh, immune and non-immune cells, and uh, this leads to the recruitment of these cells to the sites of uh, uh, inflamed tissues. Uh, so, as um, uh, so when we started this, um, you know, if we take, uh, if you do type stripping, and compare the levels of IL-17 in acne lesions and normal skin, we see that IL-17 uh, is highly expressed. And uh, if we do immunohistochemistry, uh, so staining for IL-17, so we can see that IL-17 cells are found, uh, you know, around the hair, uh, hair, hair follicle and around the pilosebaceous unit, again, implicating the role of these cells in uh, acne pathogenesis. And now uh, we've also, um, if we stimulate uh, uh, PBMCs, these are uh, PBMCs from normal donors, we uh, stimulate these cells with a lab strain of piacne. What we see is that uh, 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 piacne is able to induce both uh, TH1 and TH17 uh, uh, responses, but uh, TH2 is not involved. Uh, so the next thing we wanted to know is uh, what are the cellular sources of uh, the IL-17, and what we see is that uh, uh, the IL-17 is mainly coming from the CD4 uh, T cell subset and not uh, uh, CD8. So these are the early studies that we did, and we are using the lab soon, uh, but now uh, we have new data that has shown that uh, not all piacnes are created equal. Uh, so we have recent data from the works of uh, McDowell and Fitzgibbon, and we know that uh, uh, if you uh, sequence these uh, uh, strains, uh, so the studies have revealed that piacne clinical isolates can actually be uh, categorized or classified into distinct ribotypes, uh, several of which have been uh, associated with healthy skin. So uh, these are strains that are mainly found on people with uh, uh, healthy skin, and then we have certain strains that are mainly found on people with uh, acne disease. And uh, this is mainly from uh, sequencing and uh, comparative uh, genome uh, data. Uh, so, um, 
Uh, moving forward, I'm going to be using these terms, uh, PA, so these are strains that are associated with uh, acne disease, and uh, PH, uh, these are acnes, uh, these are strains that are mainly found on people uh, who have healthy skin. Uh, so, um, so these are the, um, the strains that we chose for the study. So um, I chose uh, three strains here, uh, PA strains that I'm uh, highly prevalent in people with uh, acne disease, and we also selected another three strain here that are mainly found in people with uh, healthy skin, and this classification uh, is based on the 16S uh, uh, ribosomal DNA, so you can classify these uh, 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 strains into you know, different ribotypes. Okay, you can also classify them into phylotypes, and this is based on uh, 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 single decolotide uh, polymorphisms, and you can also select these and classify them into different types based on, uh, uh, you know, using multilocal sequence typing, you know, and this is based on uh, uh, four genes. Sorry. Okay, so our hypothesis was that uh, Piacne strains uh, trigger TH17 cells that mediate distinct uh, immune responses which either contribute to uh, pathogenesis of acne or they can lead to a protective uh, response. So in order to, for us to understand how, uh, so the question is could this, uh, could the immune responses by uh, phylotype uh, P and PH uh, be different? Uh, so in order for us to, uh, to, to understand this, we wanted to, uh, we took these strains having trouble with this. Uh, um, we took uh, strains that are associated with acne disease, okay, and stimulated uh, uh, peripheral blood mononuclear cells from two donors. So this is acne, this acne associated strain, and this is uh, the healthy associated strain. And what you see is that uh, the acne associated strain induced uh, significant higher levels of IL-17. And this suggested to us that uh, you know, there are phenotypic differences uh, between these strains that may account for the uh, differences that you're seeing. So in order for us to understand what's happening or how these strains modulate the CD4 T cell responses at, at the T cell level, we decided to clone, uh, uh, um, to generate T cell clones. Uh, so what you're doing here, we're stimulating PBMCs with the different strains, and then we are selecting for uh, double population of cells, so cells that are are secreting L17 and also expressing uh, CD4. So uh, we sterile sort these cells and then clone at uh, 0 0.3 cells uh, per well, and then we expand these cells in culture. Uh, so this is uh, just a summary of uh, you know one of the experiments here. Uh, we have the acne-associated strain. Again, uh, we use this as a stimulus. Uh, this is the uh, double population of cells we're interested in, the ones we seeded. Uh, we established 95 uh, clones over here, and then uh, we test for, we select for functional clones, and the way we do this is by, you know, um, using autologous uh, monocytes that have been pulsed with the original, uh, you know, uh, uh, piacne, uh, Piacne bacteria, so uh, and then we add the T cells, so only T cells that proliferate in the presence of, uh, you know, uh, autologous uh, radiated monocytes that have been passed with the parasites are the ones that we're going to select for, uh, for further studies. So the ones that proliferate, we measure this in proliferation assays here, and what you can see, for example, is that clone 2 is uh, specific, and uh, 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 clone 3 is not. So, uh, so in this, we, we classify clone 2 as, uh, you know, a functional. Okay, so most of the uh, clones that we selected. So we've done this for four donors. Uh, we've generated uh, acne-specific clones and uh, the uh, healthy-associated clones. And these are the ones that I'm gonna share with you the results here. Uh, so we test whether these clones are functional. So what we do here is, uh, uh, again, this is the results of uh, AFAX experiment, so we uh, stimulate these clones with uh, anti-CD3 and CD28, and what you can see here is these clones are functional, uh, they're secreting high levels of IL-17, uh, so these are the uh, acne-associated clones that we've generated, and uh, these clones secrete, you know, uh, IL-17 ranging from uh, 29 to around 42, and the clones also express uh, are functional molecules that are associated with the uh, TH17. So, so this shows us that our method is working. Uh, so now uh, the next set of experiments we wanted to do is are these clones functional? Okay. 
Our, uh, the first uh, problem we encountered was, uh, the first problem that uh, we encountered was that, uh, uh, can we maintain these uh, clones in, cl uh, in culture? And what we discovered was that uh, uh, in the absence of uh, IL-23, most of these clones, uh, they lose the uh, TH17 phenotype. So this told us that we need the, to culture these cells in the presence of IL-23. So this is by day 40, you see that the IL-17 exploration has, uh, is reduced by almost 50%. Okay, so again, this tells us that this uh, TH17 cells may exhibit uh, uh, both instability and uh, there's also lots of plasticity that's uh, going on. And now uh, when we try to rescue, uh, when we try to rescue uh, uh, these clones that had lost the uh, RT17 uh, phenotype by providing them with IL-23, uh, what we see is that uh, we cannot rescue these cells. So once they lose the TH17 uh, uh, phenotype, you can't reverse them back to uh, producing IL-17. And when we uh, stimulate these clones and measure cytokine levels, most of them secrete uh, high levels of IL-10, so they've changed from being TH17s into Tier 1 cells. Okay, so we've generated the clones, so now we wanted to uh, test their functional uh, uh, functional abilities. Uh, so what we discovered again was that uh, uh, this healthy strains of uh, PIACN mainly induce uh, clones uh, that secrete, apart from secreting the at each 17 associated molecules such as IL-17, IL-22, IL-26, they also secreted IL-10. Whereas the strains that are associated with acne disease uh, uh, produce uh, interferon gamma in addition to IL-17, IL-22, uh, IL and IL-26. So this was very, very uh, uh, striking. Uh, so I've uh, broadly classified these clones into two. Uh, what I refer to as the protective TH17. So uh, what you're going to see here, PR uh, TH17. Uh, so in short, these clones are secreting uh, IL-17, IL-22, IL-26, and IL-10, whereas uh, the ones that are, are classified as pathogenic are secreting inter interferon gamma in addition to TH17-associated molecules. And uh, if I take uh, one of these clones, uh, uh, the um, PIACNI associated clones do uh, real-time PCR, you see that um, they express both uh, TH1 and uh, TH17 associated genes, whereas uh, uh, the clones that are induced by the healthy strains uh, mainly uh, express the uh, TH17 associated transcription factor. Uh, so these are uh, results from four donors, again, uh, showing that uh, uh, acne-associated clones um, uh, they, uh, are pathogenic clones. Again, most of them secrete interferon gamma in addition to the TH17-associated molecules, whereas the protective uh, clones, uh, you always see this IL-10 signature in addition to the uh, TH17-associated cytokines. So there's this paper that uh, came out from uh, uh, Michel uh, Gilliet lab, and they showed that uh, you know TH17 cells uh, secrete IL-26, and that uh, they described IL-26 as uh, having antimicrobial ability. So uh, they are, um, IL-26 is cationic, it's amphipathic, and it's able to kill both gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria through pore formation. So uh, the question we wanted to address is, uh, uh, do these piacne associated clones, can they kill uh, piacne in vitro? Uh, so uh, in order to test for this, uh, so we got, uh, so this is one of the uh, clones that are associated with uh, uh, healthy skin. Uh, so uh, we activate the clones, we get the supernatants, and then we culture this in the presence of uh, uh, the bacteria. And what you saw was very dramatic. These clones were able to kill uh, piacne. Okay, so this is the control, they're able to kill P. Acne. Uh, you see almost a clean plate here in uh, CFU acids. Uh, so it kills both these, uh, these are two strains, different strains. And uh, so the active molecule in this supernatants is uh, heat sensitive. So if you heat inactivate, you're able to eliminate this uh, killing capability. And uh, if you do electron microscopy, you see that uh, uh, these clones are able to kill bacteria through uh, pore formation. 
On the other hand, uh, when we uh, when we tested the uh, pathogenic clone, so this is uh, the clone that's associated with the, uh, with acne uh, disease, what we found was that this cell, uh, these clones lack ability to kill P. acne, okay? Uh, so this is a control with LL37 alone, showing that LL37 is able to kill, and this is the CFU, CFU assay. Again, you see that uh, this clone these clones are not able to kill P. acne, and for LL37, again, you see that they're able to add kill bacteria through pore formation. Uh, so, um, uh, so we generated a clone that uh, was expressing high levels of IL-26, because uh, uh, we wanted to determine the role of this uh, TH17-derived uh, IL-26. So this is a clone that's expressing high levels of IL-26, uh, uh, so by fax here and by ELISA, when we tried, so this is, we call this clone the TA26 clones. When we tried, uh, um, when we tested it in CFU assays, we saw that it's not killing P. acne. So there's something about the uh, P. acne cell wall that's different. So uh, naturally, a natural 26 released by TA17 clones, and uh, also the recombinant, we also tried recombinant uh, human IL-26, they are not able to kill P. acne. So there's something special about the P. acne cell wall that's different from other, other gram-positive and gram-negative uh, bacteria. And this is just the electron uh, uh, microscopy results from, for this experiment. Uh, so these are the controls. Uh, so if we tested the clones, uh, the T26 clones on E. coli, so it's able to kill E. coli, it's able to kill uh, Staph aureus, so it kills um, T17 clones, uh, T26 clones are able to kill both gram positive and gram negative. Recombinant uh, IL-26 also kills uh, E. coli and Staph. And uh, if we take this uh, protected T17 clones and we neutralize IL-26, uh, using a neutralizing antibody, we see there's a reduction, uh, two log reduction in the ability to kill. Um, so uh, we know that uh, these clones are uh, able, the PRTH17s are able to kill P. acne. We, are, uh, we think that the killing ability may be due to, you know, synergistic effects that may be there in the cultural uh, supernatants. But at the moment, uh, you know, we are doing a, a global uh, proteomics and uh, biochemical tests to try and identify the killing molecule in this culture. Uh, supernatal. So in short, uh, I've shown you that P. acne strains associated with acne disease induce significant L17 production. Arabotype specific TH17 clones are functional and they uh, secrete T17 associated molecules. Uh, L23 uh, uh, is a stabilizing factor for these uh, clones. And uh, uh, pH strains induce TH17 cells uh, that are associated with uh, the protective uh, phenotype and uh, for some reason, natural L26 is just not able to kill uh, P. acne, again suggesting that there is something special about P. acne that uh, uh, you know, we are yet to elucidate. Uh, so uh, again, I'd like to thank my PI, Jenny Kim, and members of uh, the lab. I'd like to uh, thank the MCJ Amelior Foundation for um, uh, funding us, and uh, thanks to Acne Cure Alliance and the ARS for inviting me. Again, thank you very much for uh, Thank you. We have had one question. Answer. Fantastic job. You have to show that al al is anti-inflammatory in this. Uh, you have known, OK. Well, okay that's so uh, that's the next experiment. OK, well, no, I, know, I know you're doing that. So let me see if I understood. Um, in healthy skin, uh, T-helper 17 are able to uh, express antimicrobial peptides, L37. Yeah, so... Um, P-agnes inhibit this. P the virulent P-agnes inhibit L37, so it's virulent. That's what you're proposing. Uh, so what, what I'm saying is, uh, uh, so this, both of these clones, uh, the protective and the pathogenic, if I do, um, you know, activate them and then do real-time PCR, if I measure the levels of antimicrobial peptides, LL37 or uh, uh, human beta defense in, uh, you know, at two, they all express uh, these antimicrobials at the same level. At the same level. At the same level. But so I, I think it's, uh, uh, the effect is uh, synergistic, so antimicrobial peptides may be involved. I don't know which ones, 
but then IL-26 also may be involved, but I'm yet whoa, to whoa, whoa, figure whoa, whoa. out. But IL-26 is, is a complication that we've done. So the experiment was simple. One is protective mm -hmm. with IL-37 and the other is not. So IL-26, so you are saying that the, the ones that are not protecting and expressing IL-26, this is what you are saying? Uh, so IL-26 uh, is antimicrobial, so it's, Gilead showed that it kills both gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. So he used uh, Pseudomonas, aeruginosas, E. coli, and stuff. Uh, but when I test this uh, IL-26 on acne, it doesn't kill acne. So there's something special about the P. acne cell wall that we need to... to, to and which one with. express IL-26? Well, uh, so all clones express IL-26. Yeah, I think you have to work this a little more, but it's fascinating. Yeah, so I need, I have, uh, there's lots of work to be done here. So if you look at all the clones, uh, uh, the, the protective ones, so this is the, yeah. uh, the protective one. Uh, they, secre they secrete IL-26, but the only difference is the IL-10 phenotype here. Okay, if you look at the, um, the pathogenic one, uh, just a moment. Uh, uh, so the uh, pathogenic strain, uh, the only difference is the uh, interferon gamma. So now there is no IL-10. The only difference is interferon gamma, but there is IL-26. So IL-10 is blocking IL-26. So, um, so there's something about IL-10 may be beneficial. I'm yet to, okay. to, to okay. elucidate okay. that. So work in progress. It'll be very fascinating. Yeah, so I'm looking for that. Yeah, I just have one question about um, the resistance of the P. acnes to the IL-26. And my thought is, of all the other organisms that were tested, are they all patho pathogens? Like it was Staph, it was E. coli, it was all these other things that are pathogens. Okay. So if you have a commensal, like P. acnes, whose job it might be to fend off the follicle from these other nasty bacteria, mm -hmm. maybe that's a part of the game. Yeah, that's, you know? uh, that's part of the game. So yeah. uh, you know, what we are thinking is uh, if we can select uh, the good bacteria and, you know, Moving forward, we can use this as probiotics. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can uh, use this as probiotics to, to protect you from, you know, uh, from staph and E. coli and all the other uh, bad bacteria. Okay. But there's lots of work to, to be done. It's, we just opened a can of work. So. Yeah, thank you very much.